All right. Welcome to another episode of The Catholic Couple Having Fun with Faith, Family, and Friends. I'm your co-host, Bobby Fredrickson. With me, as always, my beautiful wife, Katie Fredrickson. I'm the convert Catholic, and she's the... The cradle Catholic. And here we are on a very special episode of The Catholic Couple with special guests, Kira and Jeff of Mercy Divine. Hello. How are you guys? We're doing well. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. (laughs) Uh, We were chatting a little bit before we got started. We're, We're both parents, and it's like putting our kids down, try to get them set away so we can kind of do the things that we're passionate about, uh, right. whether that's, you know, the, I know you're active on Instagram and your music, but it's just, it's very hard. And that's a lot of what we do on our podcast is how to, how to balance how those to kinds the of things. Juggle, right? Yeah. The juggle. Absolutely. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely a balancing. Act. Especially when one of your uh, kids doesn't like to go to sleep every night. Oh. That's yes. right. <laughs> and it's it's the oldest one so you would you would think it would be like the little four-year-old but no yeah, it's no, the 10 year old well our our seven-year-old fell asleep like 5 30 on the couch he was helping me like carry firewood and i wore him out a little bit he was yeah. already knocked out i'd wake him up for dinner so <laughs> oh, that's the key wear him out yeah exactly yeah. right so we uh we connected on instagram because i don't even know how but i just found your music and it was just so refreshing to see good traditional music done with quality you know a lot of times it's it's one or the other sometimes but it's good i know within our, so our churches cool. especially that quality it's hard to get good quality in the music ministry in general mm-hmm. so if you guys just kind of want to maybe just start a little bit about your journey and the faith and music and how that all kind of came in and don't have to tell us everything but just like a general <laughs> so people get an idea who we're talking to <clears throat> Cool. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll go. Me, you. you go. Okay. Um. So yeah, we we met in grade school, and um, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I think we we it was preschool, I believe, on. So yes. we were in um in, Catholic in, grade school. Yes. Yeah. So all the way through, all the way through <laughs> high school, um, and we started. Um, we I realized that he was into music when he uh played at their school dance. So (laughs) I was like a fan of his and I had a big crush. Um, and I always have to tell that part. Uh, so then after that, we, I ended up auditioning for his band and then I was a member. And then from there we, um, got really serious about music and then a couple different projects over the years, um, writing music, performing music, recording. Um, and fast forward a bit, (laughs) we, uh, had, uh, a major artist, Ashley Simpson, covered one of our songs. No way. It was oh, wow. cool. Yeah, it was, it was like, I don't know, when TRL was a thing still on MTV. <laughs> yeah, music videos, remember that? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so was that your genre? More like pop? Yeah. Yeah, it was more pop like a rock. pop rock kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. We were always writing songs from day one. It was like horrible songs at first. They were just ridiculous. <laughs> so bad, I don't yeah. Even, yeah. But um, we were learning our craft as we went, and we started to I think writing our first song in eighth grade together. Mm-hmm. And then wow. that is so cool. We in there somewhere as a love story. We started dating and the rest, you yeah. know. Sister. Sorry, I'm an elementary teacher at heart, <laughs> high school teacher, and then now an elementary principal. So I just think that's oh. so cool. Like, <laughs> cool. I, I mean, that's my, that's like who I'm with every day, our kids that age. So to think that, you know, you guys I'll never know. <laughs> I know that it's crazy. I have that, you know, you, you say that all the time. Well, you know, like, boyfriends and girlfriends are like fr- friendship like well actually our friend the friendships stay with you but i just think that's a, that's a really cool and unique story to have yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's funny weird. my daughter's like i can't see myself marrying anybody in my class i'm like <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, don't it's okay that's, i don't friend. actually approve of anybody yet so. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah and i think so from there i don't know we we basically um used that that little launching pad of having that song covered. And then we moved out to Los Angeles. Um, and from, we lived there about I don't know, five years and got, got enough some, money to go for one month. Uh, yeah. When we turned were, it into five. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, okay, we're just going to pray that something happened. So, um, and then at that point, something did happen so that we could stay. Um, there was a show called the secret life of the American teenager. And they uh, decided to use our song Courage Is" as, sort of like their unofficial theme song for the show. So it was on almost every episode, I think, in the beginning of each episode. <clears throat> and they um, filmed a special video of the band and we were in the TV promos for the whole thing. So that kind of launched our project, The Strange Familiar, at that point. 
and I don't know, you take over. Yeah, me. there's <laughs> a lot of that. power in. So that's all in secular. <laughs> yes. Like, there's no, are, are you guys, is faith a part of your life at this time, at this, in this um, chapter, or is it might, like in the back burner? Because that's the, the grade I, school that's, you know. Yeah, cradle Catholics that we are, we, we, we were going to mass every Sunday and our parents always taught us that and we did. And even when we moved out to California, we were still going to mass. We joined a choir out there that was uh, a, like a contemporary evening youth mass. And so we started doing that too. So that was always sort of following us, but it was kind of behind us. You know, it wasn't really mm -hmm. like in front and we, we didn't make it a uh, super priority, but it, we didn't forget about it either. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say we were living our best Catholic life at that point, especially. I can totally relate with everything <laughs> you're saying as a cradle Catholic. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And making a lot of decisions based on success and getting our career in order and, you know, putting off having kids because we don't have any money and all these excuses mm -hmm. we can think of. Um, yeah. Lots of issues there. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, um, we, we, when we got married, we so we were living with each other before we got married. So that's confession strike number one. one. Strike one. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, we were, I, I would say, yeah, cafeteria Catholics. We were picking and choosing yeah. what we wanted to believe. And mm -hmm. um, so when we did get married, like, we hadn't thought about this before. We're like, well, we can't have kids. Like, this is too much. Um, it's... It, we, we love kids. We, we always loved our nieces and our nephews. We had, we're the youngest um, on both in both of our families. So we have older brothers and sisters who have kids and, and our, we loved our nieces and nephews and babysitting them and everything. And um, so it wasn't that we didn't like kids. It was that we were like, okay, that's just down the road. Yeah. Um, and so I started using contraception and um, when we got married and it was, it was like the slow decline of, just so many different things. I had physical symptoms. I had um, sort of a really big scare where I had a really bad migraine that seemed like a stroke. Um, mm -hmm. I ended up in the ER. And I'm thinking I'm going to die. Wow. And it was it was ironic because I was, when I went to the, the restroom, I was sitting there by myself and I was just praying because I was so scared because I couldn't, I couldn't form words. It got to that point where you can't talk. So I thought like seriously, and you know, the numbness down one side and wow, it was, it was scary. So I'm praying. I'm like, God, don't let me die. And and the first thought that popped in my mind was like, I have to be a mom. Mm. And that hit really hard. Cause that's the one thing I'm trying to avoid right now is mm -hmm. no, I can't, you know? And so yeah. it's like everything else in our yeah. life was working out great. We were, you know, we started getting a lot of songs and film and TV and music part was going up 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 but then our, our marriage and our our faith was going down 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 so right it's, uh, not in the best situation there but um the songs though that we were writing in the fact that the song you were talking about courage is is really about <clears throat> just getting back up again and just keep going and mm -hmm. and it's funny because that song of all the songs we wrote that got out there the most was the f the first song we ever wrote as a prayer and it was the first time we ever really let God into the music. Mm -hmm. And it's just so funny that that and that's the catalyst. one that yeah. <laughs> sort of started everything. Um, mm -hmm. Little hints along the way that, you know, he's got his hand in things. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was it was weird because that that song actually we were surprised that that was the song that um, our producer picked. He was like it was like the last one on the bottom of the CD. We that put was it at the end. <laughs> Because it was this slow, pretty song. Like, no one was, we need to rock. Like, all oh, these crazy the first rock 19 songs, songs are really yeah. solid. We just threw that one on in case. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the music kind of shifted from this very um, sort of angry, angsty kind of place into something different. And while we were going through this big upheaval, like with my physical symptoms, but also I started developing like anxiety after this because. It was like the first time I realized, you know, I'm young and I'm healthy and I'm like, how is this going on? Why am I having all these problems, these migraines? And so I was really questioning that. And um, that made me, I guess, for the first time, really feel my own like mortality. So mm -hmm. I was, I was, I was starting to really have a lot of anxiety and that was, that was probably the hardest part of it. So long story short, went to a bunch of doctors all of them said, no, it's not the pill. You're fine. You need anti-anxiety medication or you need this or you need that. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, something's not right here. So mm -hmm. um, we figured it out and I just said, I'm not doing this anymore. <clears throat> and that's when we really dove into the faith. And that was kind of like the catalyst for us to want to know more about what the church teaches and to really live our faith 
versus sort of have it on the side compartmentalized as this side thing that we <laughs> I'll never I'll never forget the day that we went back to confession after like five years. It's been a long time, three or four maybe. Um, and afterwards we just felt like this huge weight lifted. We like went and got ice cream and we were just like, Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> and it was like really hard to like, make that decision to go because mm -hmm. like, you're embarrassed. You don't want to think about these things, but we were just so happy that we did it. It was like a new chapter. Yeah. Um, and around the same time that rosary that was sitting around in my sock drawer that I never used, you know, came back out. We mm -hmm. started praying to Mary. We, her intercession too was just like, she really helped get us where we needed to go. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. And that you're in that together. A lot of times people have those experiences alone, you wow. know, and, yes. and I mean, not alone, I mean, God is with them and, and they have, you know, that, especially those incredible experiences in, in the sacrament of, of, of reconciliation and confession, but that the fact that you guys were able to experience that together is really powerful. It was amazing. Yeah. I, I was very thankful. I think I was just telling somebody that this the other day, but that we found the rosary together and we were, you were willing and I was, we were both willing because we were going through that suffering. We were like, we'll do whatever it takes. We, we're lost. We need to start yeah. somewhere. So we started yeah. with the rosary and Mary always leads you back to Jesus. So, yeah. so you had how much longer after that, did you start having, having your children, having your first, you know, your first daughter and having your children? <clears throat> so shortly after that, we, um, we, we, re home first. we recorded our like third album or second or third album out in Los Angeles. And, mm -hmm. um, we actually did like a big Kickstarter campaign and people funded it. So it was really cool. We did that. Um, somewhere in there, we were on America's Got Talent. I'm not even oh, sure yeah. like, when that was. <laughs> no way. Oh, so wow. were you called Mercy Divine this whole time or what was, what was not it? A different... yeah. This was still the strange familiar. Yeah. So okay. we were the strange familiar and, um, we were on, we made it to like the live rounds of America, America's Got Talent. And uh, it was a, we love that show. We're going to have to look this up now. Yeah, right. My daughter likes to watch it. With yeah. Me, uh, it's Aww. it's intense being on the other end. It was yeah. hard. Oh, I bet. <laughs> it's but it was fun. Body. It was an experience. <laughs> so did you get uh, four, uh, four uh, likes or four yeses or how did, how did yeah. that go? At the time, there was only three judges. Was three yeah, judges. Was three. And we got, we made it through, there's like, you know, there's, auditions they don't even show you so we made it through that initial then then there's one that's televised and they film and then you don't know if you'll get cut even out of it even if you make it so that was a surprise we're like are we gonna be in there yeah so oh, wow. we made it through that one and then we did vegas um and then we did the live rounds which were really stressful because you have to have your performance down to like this teeny little amount of time and you have to yeah yeah, yeah right it's, it was, but it was, it was definitely uh, an experience to remember and it was fun. So um, we did that. I didn't answer your question. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got sidetracked. Um, but we, shortly after we, we recorded, I don't know, five or six songs and we just kind of decided like, and after this reversion, we're like, okay, we need to move home. It's time now. We're ready to go home and, and be back in Ohio with our family. Um, so we moved home and as we moved home, we signed a record deal. It was so, it was so funny. No one signed us while we lived in Los Angeles. And then, <laughs> and then we moved to Ohio. <laughs> we signed a record deal with an indie label gift. Um, <clears throat> in uh, New York city. So that was, fun. it was actually kind of cool. Cause we were coming to this coast anyway. So, mm -hmm. um, and then we thought, you know, Oh, we're still going to do this music thing. It doesn't matter where we are. We can do it anywhere, which is mm -hmm. true. I mean, especially nowadays, even more mm -hmm. so. Um, and we were still like very afraid to have children. I don't know, even though we were living our faith now and we were not, you we were open to life, but we were also like inside, I think still closed, like and afraid. Well, all those years of like the world telling you, yeah. get your career together, exactly. get your songs done, get, you know, get your life in order. Exactly. That lie that our culture tells us that you can't do, you can't have your dreams and children too. Right. Right. That yeah. you have to choose between having children and your dreams, which is such a lie. It is. It is. And and we had no idea. I just remember one day we were in our apartment. I was talking to him and I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, there's something really strange. Like, I, I feel like I miss somebody that I don't even know yet. And like, we, <laughs> it's so weird that that's, that was my thought process. And I remember telling you this. I'm like, I was getting really emotional about it. Cause I was like, I knew I, I always loved the name rain. It was like just, I don't know. I loved it for a guy or a girl. And I thought 
well, our first child, I really want to name them Rain. So I knew this for years. And um, I just remember telling them, like, I feel like I miss Rain. <laughs> I'm like, but I don't know Rain yet. So, so. And then uh, shortly after that, uh, we were surprised by getting pregnant. And um, and uh, it was like a shocker. I was, I don't think we were, we weren't sad in any way. We were excited, mm -hmm. but also really afraid, really scared. It was a big mm -hmm. like hurdle for us to get it. Like, how do we do this? We got this label now in New York. Like, what are we going to do? They're going to be mad at us or something. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know what I thought. Yeah. And I remember telling my mom and I was afraid to tell my mom that I was pregnant. I'm like, what, why are you afraid to tell? And then she goes, what's wrong with you? That's a great thing. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. I just had this, the culture is so um, pervasive. It's so in your face that, you know, oh, you can't, you can't live like your life's over if you have I'm like, <laughs> what? And now, obviously it's not, obviously it's just an amazing gift and just so beautiful. And so we, um, we had our daughter rain Marie. So she, um, is a person and she's amazing. And I can see why I missed her before I knew. Her. <laughs> Aww, that's awesome. That's Aww. awesome. Well, I don't, I was scared too. I, I mean, it's just, I think this was part of it. It's just the unknown and the uncertainty of it because mm -hmm. there's so many variables that it's just like, you know, it's just like, you don't know how to do it until you do it. Like yeah. You could be a niece and nephew, but it's like, Hey, you, can, you get them, you get them right back. But <laughs> in the middle, all, all the stuff that came with it. And for us, our, our daughter, she was five and a half weeks early. So I got the call at work, like, Hey, don't freak out. But, uh, you know, she was doing June. We ended up having her in May. We named her Avery Marie. So oh, she's our, right. she's our Ave Maria. Yeah. So, oh. but, it, but I, I literally, literally she had the baby and the, the shower was the next day. So mm -hmm. I was at the shower by myself. We didn't have anything yet. <laughs> Talk about like freaking out. Like, yeah. I'm mean, like, I'm the guy at the shower. We don't have the crib. We don't have any of that stuff. Okay. And we just had a baby. Dove right into parenthood like that with none well, of that. Well, do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> trouble yeah. right? isn't that funny though like god you make all these plans and none Doesn't of your matter. plans ever really <laughs> matter oh, because he's yeah. oh yeah i said a rosary every day for that baby to be on time and healthy <laughs> healthy but she was uh you know only three pounds and oh. um pr premature and you know she was not on time i'm like what the heck but <laughs> that allowed me to be with her for a year you know take time off oh. so yeah. His, his plans are definitely better. Right. <laughs> yes. That's what we've learned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were hoping for May 13th, but we ended up getting May 11th, but that was cool too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. So, so transition. So you, you, so now that you became parents, what, what was the next step? You got plugged into your back at your local parish. You moved back to like home, home, like your hometown. Yeah, so like where you guys grew up. Yeah. About the same time. It was funny literally someone knocked on our door <laughs> and said uh, someone from our church and said we'd like to start a youth group and we want you guys to start doing the music for our mass and we're like to me <laughs> are you talking to me okay I, all right we'll talk about it and so that was something we'd never done on our own it was something we've been familiar with obviously but um it was a new venture for us a total new path and and so we said yes and we we started it um, gosh, that was almost nine years ago almost now. Nine years ago, yeah. <laughs> and here we are, still doing that mass. Yeah. Um, oh, are you really? It's planning it, you know, doing all the music for it, writing the psalms. I think we've written every psalm in the book so far over those three cycles. Mostly because <laughs> I'm just lazy and I don't, I, I don't want to have to learn other people's like. So I'm like, I'm just gonna do it my way. And so we ended up writing <laughs> these psalms, but. Um, I was really happy that we did because now we have quite a big um, collection of music, even you know. Uh, Eucharistic hymns and um, psalms and stuff. So that's kind of how Mercy Divine was born because we decided slowly but surely. Yeah, we were doing all this. We needed um, a liturgy. place. Right? Yeah, we, and need we needed a place, a place for, for it. it, and we wow. just fell in love with it more and more. And we just said, okay, we're going to do this now because this is really. And at one point, we we still loved doing that music with the strange familiar, and maybe we'll still continue to do stuff. But it got to a point where we were like, we just want to be just boldly catholic like i just want to do music that is 100 percent catholic and we like you said earlier like we want it to sound as good as possible like we we work really really hard to try um to record everything as best we can um all the experience and all the um stuff we've learned over the years and the mixing we do a lot of it on our own um takes us forever but we a little out of time <laughs> we do it um but yeah we just really want to have like we want to set as just as high a standard as we would have with the other band for for this mm -hmm. stuff too 
Wow. So you guys have like a little studio in the in the house, so that's where you guys can. Yes, my yeah. little yes. oasis that the lock doesn't work, so they still come barreling in here anyway. But <laughs> um, <laughs> we we come down here mostly after they go to bed, um, mm -hmm. and we'll do a lot of our tracks, recording and writing. And yeah, it's been really room. nice. Having it here in the house, it's very helpful. We, when we redid our basement, I was like drawing the plans out. <laughs> I'm like, play area, studio. Yeah, <laughs> slowly but surely, my studio got smaller and their play area got bigger. <laughs> but it's big enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's kind of, we we had like a, a mother-in-law <laughs> suite down here and our mother-in-law didn't want to, she didn't want to move in. So we're like, all right, well, we're going to turn it into this little podcast studio. We do little videos oh, cool. and stuff. Same thing, but it's, but I think it's awesome because we've actually had our daughter on the podcast for an episode and like she's getting her interested in seeing this stuff. So is that something that your guys is you? I'm sure you guys are singing all the time and music. If it's in your family, I'm, your kids mm -hmm. are going to catch that bug. And so you can make it like a fam, not the Partridge family or anything like that. But you, know what, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Where like they see you guys are passionate about it and they see you guys in the studio. And is that something that, you know, that you want to pass on to your kids? Like, mm -hmm. I, you know. Absolutely. Being boldly Catholic through your ministry, which is music. Yeah, we um, actually have been even relying on our daughter pretty heavily like the last couple months. <laughs> um, so she does sing and we had her, she kind of joined when we started that, you know, started playing for that mass. She was, I don't know, how old was she? Like five? No, even younger. Like what? So that's nine. She was like a yeah, baby. She was like so, four. But when she was about five, she started coming up and, you know, being with us and then she'd be sitting there she'd be like can i sing and we're like yeah but you're five so we're like see what we can do we did not turn the microphone on at first we but. gave her a mic and we let her just hear herself through the little monitor so no one in the church could hear her she could just kind of practice along with us and learn the songs and so fast forward to maybe last year we actually started putting her through the system and she can actually, she's pretty good. Like she really actually has, um, you know, Hold she her. can hear and she can sing. So we, <laughs> we gave her a lot of work this year, actually, because recently my voice, I lost my voice. Um, I had nodes on my vocal cords, which are now healing. And that's awesome because it was since June, I couldn't really lead so or do stretch, anything. Yeah. It's a very, very slow burn of like having to heal and allow myself to not sing. And it's, it's amazing. It's very humbling because you really have to rely on other people. And, you know, we have um, another member of our group, Joel, he's amazing. He plays violin and he sings, but um, he was singing a lot of it and he took over a lot, but then I also would be like, okay, Rain, you're going to sing this one. And she's like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so yeah, our kids are definitely musical. River she's very bold too. You, she doesn't know the song. She's like, whatever, I'll figure it out. <laughs> our son, yeah. like, you yeah, know, he's, he's starting to pick that up now too. Yeah. So. And that's just, the beauty of 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 not allowing the world to dictate that your dreams are over or that they need to be to the it's that you invite your family in and you bring them along for the ride and look at the how that impacts them and their lives and and that trickle down effect right and what she could eventually then you know go forward in her own life you know it 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 really is so it's it's so much more powerful than right. just Oh, waiting for the perfect time because there's no time. perfect time. <laughs> right right yeah. and, and those songs are prayers they carry them in their hearts they can yeah. it's a lot easier to remember a song a psalm when you sing it that you know we catch right. our kids all the time we you know we listen to you know like hill song and elevation and all that and our parish uh has a uh, our know, parish has more contemporary, contemporary music, music but it's but it's very well done they mm -hmm. have like professional musicians so it's like yeah top notch and it's done very reverently mm -hmm. which is nice but like our kids like we listen to the songs like all the time and they know the songs i'll just catch them in the room they're just jamming out and you know it, it seeps into them songs uh, mm -hmm. you know what does augustine say singing is like praying twice because right. it does stick you know that's true there you go absolutely yeah uh augustine is our son's middle name so it's what popped in <laughs> when you said that um yeah he's i think I think that's an amazing thing, uh, you know, the praying twice. I, I love that because I think that's what our mission is right now, trying to make it as reverent as we can. Mm -hmm. um, when we started, we were just kind of, it was so new for us to play the super contemporary stuff. So we were playing, you know, Matt Marr and all that at Mass mm -hmm. and all those songs. And pretty soon we started realizing, like, which he's very talented um, and, and writes amazing songs. I just think we've sort of 
started finding our own way and trying to incorporate some more traditional things as we go more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, we recently just started attending the Latin mass as well. So we do, we play at the Novus Ordo, we attend the Latin mass um, and sometimes Novus Ordo too. It's just, it's both, but like I'm realizing how much I want to um, do whatever I can and whatever we can to make the music, you know, lift everybody's soul up as much as possible. So. Yeah, that's interesting that you, that you say that our, our, our parish, gosh, I, our pastor kind of talks about it as a Orthodox with a twist. I feel like he said that before. So the, the masses, uh, even our school masses all start with uh, calling upon the Holy Spirit, but in Latin, Venice, mm-hmm. Venice Sanctus Spiritus, and it's very reverent. But then the next song is some kind of like, yeah, like a contemporary Christian song, especially for the kids, you know, because it gets them engaged. But there's, you go it's, to it's, one it's, of those it's, masses, it's so inter, so in, it's, so it's very into interwoven them. into mm-hmm. between yeah. that ancient uh, and traditional and contemporary it's very it, it well, like crosses you know well that's another like adoration adoration, our adoration um does the same thing goes goes yeah we have a, a lot of adoration contemporary music nights. but well, it, there's a way when it's done right you know to to do it in a way as long as it's reverent as long as it elevates you to have a connection and, and, a, and an encounter with with god because that's the point right that that music is supposed to elevate your soul to be able to have that openness and that that encounter with Jesus, that encounter with God, to, to open up our senses a little bit higher, to to experience the spiritual, right? Because mm-hmm. we're only a people of our of our senses, and there's a whole other spiritual dimension that we kind of forget about in our materialism and in our material. So I feel like music elevates that. Um, so how do you, as so, my mom is very traditional, like very traditional she comes to our masses and she like huffs and puffs <laughs> you know <laughs> like you know so as, as you are um, yeah as you're experiencing the, the tlm now right and that is your your preferred way of, of of worship that would be my mom's preferred way of worship um how do you juggle between that contemporary and traditional yeah wow well, it's, it's it's a it's a balance. We're, we're, we're figuring it out. I think we're, we're working through that right now. Um, it, it starts with prayer. Mm-hmm. I think we really, when we were trying to re, I don't know, reconfigure our group and figure out what our next direction was going to be. I think we just had to like pause and just kind of soak it in and then just go into the Latin mass and, and thinking about the rich history of the church and, and, mm-hmm. you know, the chanting and things that we could do that we could bring in and inter, you know, intertwine then to, to what we're doing. Um, we're just kind of exploring and invest, investigating it right now. We're, we're not exactly sure. But one thing we do want, when we started the group, we figured, okay, how can this be as Catholic as possible? Well, the two pillars are Mary and the Eucharist. So mm-hmm. our first EP last year was Marian Songs, uh, released on December 8th, Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Um, and now our next album that we'd like to do is going to be a Eucharistic album. And as we're recording, <laughs> as we're, yeah, yeah, with the year renewal and everything. Too, yeah. um, <laughs> and so we really want to make those, this is sort of the challenge we're in right now. We really want to make those Eucharistic songs singable at mass and as reverently recorded as possible. Um, and so like, we're, it's so funny because like, I instantly go for like, let's do this to the click track. Let's add some drums. Let's add some this. Oh, this is sounding great. Look at that groove. This is cool. The thing's blowing up. And she comes in. I'm like, no. yeah, no, no. Get all, get rid of all <laughs> that. At the foot of the cross, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh so we're, and I'm like, and I hate to admit it. I'm like, you're right. You were right. It was better with just the voice. You didn't put all that other stuff. So it's a struggle right now. We're trying to figure out how to. To, to navigate that a little bit. It's funny. Poor Joel has to be like our referee between the. So <laughs> yeah. like, I don't know if you guys have that working together on things, but like, if we're just... we don't have a referee, we need one. <laughs> <laughs> I highly hard. recommend one. He's always laughing at us. He's like, okay, how about we do this? And then we do that. And I'm like, thank you, Joel, because I don't we're know. trying to, we're trying to envision what that's going to sound like yeah. through this album. And hopefully when we get to the end of this, uh, 
16 or 17 song album we're working on so we'll have a clear picture of how we can do that and, and mesh those that's two so cool. that's really our goal is that's so interesting i think it's important to remember the both and you know our our culture our and honestly the the devil himself right he wants us to be divided and he wants it to be an either right. or but there's such a beauty in a both and right. and that's what our faith is it's a both and that's i mean that our world says yeah Either career or, or children or one, good, uh traditional bad. or contemporary mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it's it doesn't have to be that way there's another way to go well, you know that reminds me of the other augustine quote is ever ancient ever new so uh -huh. how do you how do you do both you know mm -hmm. it, it, it it is a it, it i like i like to compare it to the the the, the the law and the prophets, the prophets and the guardians. It's like, yes, let's hold traditional, but we also have to also see, we have to change, you know, the dogmas and all that kind of stuff. We have to go crazy, but there's still like ways to, to make it have that tension between both where mm -hmm. it's still reverent. It's still beautiful. It's, or it's thoughtful. It's thought about, especially when you're talking, singing about the Eucharist, obviously. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. 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 We, it's something beautiful. I, yeah, it's absolutely true. Um, I, we attended, um, a couple masses that were like Novus Ordo, but they would have elements of the Latin mass, you know, ad orientum mm -hmm. or uh, even the communion rail or things mm -hmm. like that. And it, I think even like the littlest things, you know, the bells, the incense, like a little bit, you know, bring it in. I, like, I, I like that, you know, I think that adds just even more, I think it's the, the mystery of it that I think is really beautiful. Um, and I think the music can kind of do the same thing. Like right. it, it can all go together where, yeah, you can, I, I think it's hard to say you can't ever create something new that's going to be, you know, as good as, or, you know, right. <laughs> it's going to work yeah. as well. Right. As or appeal to every aspect of what yeah. all people And it's going to be hard are. to top exactly. some of the Gregorian stuff. I mean, it's yeah. just, it's <laughs> yeah. not, it's not, but like, I mean, this last Sunday, I mean, I, I'll catch myself like when I get back from. Uh, from communion and I'm praying and they're playing like, I'll, it, it's so good. It even the contemporary stuff, it'll bring me to tears. Like mm -hmm. I've, I've had it both, you know, I've had that, that experience. Like uh, what's the song they uh, dwell in the midst of us. I love that song. Mm -hmm. It's like, especially you come back. It's just like, but it, you know, but music, if it's done well and reverent, it has power to, True you know, sense. silence does that a lot too for me, but yeah. also great music is also good also. So we need great musicians who are reverent and doing it just because it's from, you know, that that's, I think that's part of the problem when we hear traditional, they think like the eighties, like, you know, oh, like that the, the song books from the seventies and stuff like that's not traditional. We're a more traditional mass. You go in and it's, uh, um, here I am, Lord, which I actually really love that song yeah, from the but, 90s, right? No. That's a classic. Here, 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 but that's that's a that's a, that's our generation. The <laughs> that's the 80s. That that ain't traditional. Like yeah. you know, <laughs> but then that was one right. of the conversations when we um were talking with our violinist, because he kind of has been collaborating with a lot of these ideas. That was one of the first things we talked about was our experiences growing up in the church and our glory and praise hymnal and city of God and all the songs that we knew. <laughs> oh, and, yeah. <laughs> it's like but like we thought that was tradition yeah like right. 19 yeah. copyright 1992 written in the 70s you know like I, that's all i knew i thought that's far back as it goes for me you know yeah, so right. but yeah. then we started realizing like there's so much more mm -hmm. uh, it's the sparks started flying. Everywhere. It would. Can I just make a request after your seventeen song album? Can you? Because you know, you know, our generation would love it if you guys released like those old school, like <laughs> our church, like here I am, Lord. <laughs> I mean, I would be. I would jam to that. Absolutely. I would love every minute one of bread, the city one of God. Body, one on bread, one body. On on like I want all of those. Yes, <laughs> that's a good idea. Uh, actually. Oh, Lord, <laughs> yeah, here I am, Lord. What's, what's the other one I'm thinking of? That's like the most popular. The one that besides here, yeah. He goes uh, wings. Yeah, Eagles yeah. wings for sure. That yeah. My mom hates that. Her song. mom hates that. She song. hates it. Yeah. Every, yeah. every funeral. Every like, funeral. Don't, don't play ever funeral. play this at my funeral. I'm like, okay, I'm <laughs> talking. This is like an emotional part. It's so <laughs> funny. Don't touch I, me anymore. I sing a lot of funerals. Like I'll canter. Like you know, we don't play them, but I'll I'll show up and I'll do the cantering. And I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, it's Eagles wings every time. <laughs> yeah. Every yeah. time. Eagles wings for the win, baby. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. We, you know, one we that we worth considering actually putting on the Eucharist, Eucharistic album was, um, you know, I am the bread of life, the classic one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. And uh, we kind of 
sort of did our little twist on it, updated it a little bit. But like, I was wondering if we should put it on there. And that's kind of a good point. People do have these, um, I don't I don't know if you want to call it an attachment or. Yeah, totally an attachment. That's it. It's, right? what, yeah, it's, what you nostalgia. it's nostalgia. And so yeah. like, we'll like, we're like, not that many of our childhood friends are Catholic or they used to be Catholic and they're not practicing any, anymore. So they'll literally like, we have a friend that's always like, Oh, you know, like I'll come to church with you. Do they still sing that? Like she brings up all the songs. She starts singing them to us. And I'm just like, there's a sense of nostalgia in that. And I think that might be, that, that could be something that draws some people yeah. that have fallen away back, honestly. I and think that's a great idea. I appreciate the input there. Yeah. I, it's funny. I, it's I, very I, ironic I because we, the, the parish that we're playing our music at is the same parish we grew up going to. So mm -hmm. the school and the, and the church from K through eight or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so being a part of that parish for 30 some plus years, <laughs> yeah. um, it, it's interesting because like I, the same book, I think, is still in the pew from when we were Very kids. Much. So, I mean, we gather just, or whatever they, whatever that's called. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How, how did you guys get introduced to like Matt Maher and stuff like that? That was our first introduction, to, like anything other than like Catholic music. We went, we went to the to first, conference, we went to the first there. amazing parish we conference. We didn't know that it, Catholics, we had didn't that. know any, and he played for adoration. Yeah. And we were like 10 feet. It was like, mm -hmm changed our lives and our like we were just getting into our faith and i had just become catholic we went to this conference and we seen him play it was like in front of the blessed sacrament it was like a small like it wasn't I don't know how many a couple hundred people probably mm -hmm. Wow. But it changed, like, I mean, everyone was crying. The whole room, like, I never see Catholics, <laughs> like, like on fire no. for their faith when you're in your parish. You feel isolated. All of a sudden, you go to a conference, mm -hmm. and you see people, like, this weren't, like, see, your age. it wasn't kids. These were, like, adults, you know? So, it was, like, <laughs> so and everybody's, like, crying, and, like, adults, like, what but, is like, going under on? 70. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I, we had a similar circumstance. Very similar experience, um, yeah. Yeah, where we went out to Arizona. There was a big life teen conference out there, and um our, was, our parish decided yeah, our, to do the life teen program so we oh, were plugged cool. into the life teen you know type style music and a lot of the mar stuff and we were that was like our first inspiration was whatever he did we would try to do <laughs> so yeah, right, when right. we went out west to arizona yeah you were you yeah it was it was just it was kind of like the first time we had the same sort of thing um with the you know the adoration and the band was playing with the adoration mm -hmm. and we were we i were, just I've, i'd never had cried before at church no, kind of right, like, us too. Whoa. <laughs> That's it's a, funny because like if I'm ever- young people here. This is awesome. I'm a crier. So if I'm at adoration, I cry. So it doesn't really matter where, where it is or what's going on. If Jesus yeah. is there, I'm just going to melt. I cry during adoration too. So thank you. That validates me. <laughs> well, we're blessed. Her, we have a, a chat, an older, uh, the old church, which is like the day chapel, which is next to her school and then a, a newer church. But we all, we have perpetual adoration chapel that's like in her parking lot of her school. And like a little log cabin. It's like an old log another, cabin. It's like one of the like, first, it used to be like one of the first churches and it's yeah, like in her parking lot. So it's just yeah, like, maybe. there's no excuse. Like you go pick up the kids, like, all right, we're going to go talk yeah. to Jesus. Let's go. Yeah. You know, at least, at least I, get 10 I, I minutes could go and, more often confession there, but yeah, you know, right. when you. So are you guys going to the Eucharistic uh, revival in Indianapolis? Have you guys been thinking about doing that? You're close if you're in Ohio in July. Yeah, we're super close. We've been we, thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, we were actually thinking about it. Um, I did – someone from the Eucharistic revival reached out to me, and we did like a little real collab. Oh, okay. We, we did too. A, oh, cool. So nice. we're all there. So. Yeah. We should all go together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're we're going for sure. It's like an hour, what, an hour and a half, not even two no, hours like from our two, house. Two and a half hours. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, a little bit further yeah. for us. It's like yeah. eight. But we did that drive for our daughter's gymnastics meet last True. year, so we can we could do yeah. that again. Yeah. I, I, part of why I was asking because I was th I was thinking because we had last our last podcast we had Enoch on and he's yeah. in Kentucky. Yeah. So I don't know if you have you seen anything about this uh, on the West Coast? They do like a Catholic Palooza. You know what? I saw him posting about that a lot this yeah. year. He was like, what? So I'm like, we need to do a Catholic Palooza. <laughs> like, I'm like, we're going to host it. Like, I get Enoch, get everybody we know, uh, <laughs> and, and have like a cool Catholic music festival, but make it super like out of this world, like different. Yeah. Are I'm you like, suggesting I'm like, to do this at the same time as the Catholic? No, like before, like butt it up Eucharistic. next, close to it. Oh, like I'm tailgate, in, I, like a I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the thinking stages of it. But we're thinking of like, he's like, yeah, he's like, uh, like, Enoch's close. He's in Kentucky, so he's not far. And then I was, uh, 
we have an awesome, like I said, awesome band, but I'm like, we get, um, just gets a bunch of different awesome musicians and we have we're also attached to the we had this awesome shrine that mm -hmm. you know five hundred thousand people a year come to it's the wow. shrine of uh, christ's passion and it's a beautiful grounds it's like right where our church is at and it's like wow. life's now they've they've expanded it like now they have mount sinai with moses and our lady of guadalupe plaza it's just it's something to see mm -hmm. but it's it would also make it awesome like venue <laughs> you know For, like an outdoor stage and just like a whole yeah. like make it like a cool catholic dream fest. Big, dream like a, big. I, 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 I just started thinking about it today i, I like, think that that cool. that is a cool idea and that when you are with that group of Catholics and that, you know, Eucharistic, yeah. um, what is it called again? A Eucharistic revival, revival that that could be your chance to maybe rub elbows, get no numbers and start to organize yeah. it, well, I you just, know, I, I but just, to have it in the parking lot of the same time. No, I, no, I would, I was thinking pressure. about making it like a, no, not just a concert, but just making like a whole day of like, mm -hmm. you know, just, I like whatever. That. No Catholic pressure. Solution. I'm not trying to say anything. I'm just thinking a lot of it's like, <laughs> I'm just jealous that the people of the West coast are getting all together. They're doing right. it. They're yeah. doing their Catholic scene. You need a like, Midwest rep. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Because exactly. our kids were, um, my my daughter was just rapping a bunch of Enoch songs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. We we love. We, I our kids know. Uh, you know, your guys' song that you guys do. Was yeah, awesome. that's their favorite, actually. Oh, yeah. good. Mm -hmm. yeah. We we listen to. Um, like we're listening to all his albums, but like the new one we've been listening to every time I drive, I have, we have like a half hour drive to take them to their sports practice. And it's funny. They are, they're so funny the other day. My, I had it so loud and the, the kids are like, afterwards, like I turned it off and they go, River goes, did you hear my note? I was holding it the whole time. And I said, I, didn't <laughs> oh, I was like, did you hear my harmony? And I'm like, no, I didn't hear my No, I was jamming. I was a bit. I was jamming. Like, yeah. yeah. They have it all memorized with their own made up lyrics because they can't quite follow what he's saying. <laughs> they're down. Close enough. Yeah. Oh, he's, so good. he's awesome. No, he, yeah, he's awesome. And he had nothing but praises for you guys yeah. and how, how good you guys are. And he said you guys are the best in business and mixing and producing. And yeah. And so what's on the uh what's on the horizon? So people who are listening can can find you guys and and know what you guys are up to. Obviously on Instagram, we'll share all the links and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff or anything you got going on that you want to talk about, feel free. But I know the the single that just released was it yesterday or today the, yes, fresh, yesterday the freshman yes yeah so that you know the reason why we did that single was um just because timing it just seemed right it was you know in ohio that huge vote was just happening um which oh issue one got wow. passed so it was, it was very oh, devastating yeah. yeah and uh that song has always been just in my in the background of our lives and like just we just always loved it you know growing we used up to cover in eighth grade you know, we were <laughs> in I, the, I don't know how old we were but like we were in your parents basement and we were practicing and yeah. um it was just i don't know something we always loved and uh so we always wanted to do it and this time it's just all of a sudden it just popped up and with my vocal injury like we had recorded it prior to that so we were like oh we have this like this is a great time and then all these things are happening within the culture right now and it's mm -hmm. um such a such a culture of death that we're in and so mm -hmm. it's like it's nice to just take it from a personal place you know someone who experienced going through this pain and stuff so that's why we went with that so the singles out on all digital outlets um and let's see what's next we're working on the album the eucharistic album mm -hmm. and then um other than that like yeah we we're just constantly kind of doing whatever comes our way i guess she's staying up <laughs> late hours trying to get more reels pushed out every day get those reels done <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's that's the struggle that's the struggle it's funny yeah. it's, it's been amazing like so i've met so many so many awesome people by just starting to post like i started to post like about a year ago and then just you know like meeting you guys and like you know and just everybody like enoch and then these collabs like that have just happened just a, the most amazing people everyone who's in love with their faith that you know they're really cool they're just they're just good yeah. people so we can speak the same language you know right yeah. well, and it's nice to have a place to connect like that's what i love about the the catholic histogram because it's like it's i mean yeah you're gonna get the hate it's from the community the the uh the, it, i get more like negative stuff from protestants all day long and like <laughs> i don't know one catholic that goes on any protestant anything of like you're don't, you're wrong. Don't you're this. I'm like you're wasting <laughs> your time. Like we're here trying to create beauty and 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 get the faith out. If you don't agree with us, whatever. Okay, but like, 
it's just it's just but it for the 90 percent of it is just beautiful it's like mm -hmm. connecting with people yeah. you know because sometimes you can feel isolated you know like hey mm -hmm. um, we're taking our faith really serious our, a lot of our friends don't but we're blessed enough we we have an awesome small group that's like 25 people now that we yeah. that are our age have kids and we help lead it and awesome. so we do um someone gives a talk and we have a dinner and then we do praise and worship song and then we pray together and stuff. Oh. So, but we bring the kids into it so they get to see it. And they but have it, peers that are being raised in the same yeah. way, right. That we are. So it is, a really but it's helping thing. create relationships, it's community uh, and, that's needed and community that's yeah. needed mm -hmm. on, on the online space is important too, because right. there is a lot of hatred and vitriol and it's mm -hmm. nice to see, Hey, you sing in or sharing a, a awesome state, a saint story or a reels and, positive stuff going on so keep up the good work it's uh yeah. we're, we're following along so other than um that instagram you guys have a shop and you guys have other stuff going on on there tell us a little bit about i know you do novenas a lot yeah so i try to go live and do a novena every month um just kind of rolled out subscriptions and starting to get like a tight-knit little group there which is really cool um and then yeah like we do have a little merch shop which just kind of was I don't know. I just had this desire to do some Marian things that I just wanted to put on t-shirts and mugs and stuff. And that's been fun to see how that's developed. Um, and then, yeah, other than that, like we're on, we're on YouTube, we're on um, Facebook, we're on, I'm, um, I think threads what's threads the other thing <laughs> like all these things <laughs> yeah. now. To keep I, I think it's dying down threads like started yeah, hot. I, it's going to be hard to be keep yeah, up with Twitter because yeah. Twitter's just, yeah. Or Twitter, Jeez. Twitter is, X, X or whatever. X, no. I can't even keep up with all this. It's crazy. No, yeah, I'm just I on know. Instagram. It's a lot. <laughs> but you're, 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 I mean, yeah, you, you, you had an awesome year. You started and just skyrocketed because it's talent. You put out quality, people recognize mm -hmm. it, and you're authentic and you, you know, you're doing a good job. People respond to that. So keep up the good work. It's very nice to meet right. you guys. Thanks for taking some time, having grandma come over, help, and everything. I know. We, <laughs> they didn't come in. I know. We, we made yeah. some music. I know. It's like a date I, night, right? I know. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, you got to well, squeeze them when you can. Sure. We have a date yeah, night. Yeah, we're lucky. Our dog, our dog hasn't moved. Usually yeah, she's, she's sleeping. This is she's, right. like, <laughs> she's like a puppy. Usually, Usually she'll jump she's up and like, hear something. At this time, she's crawling antsy, around our legs, around and I'm going like this. Well, thank you guys for doing that. Yeah, oh my goodness. Giving people like us a platform to talk to and reach new people. It's great. We love, yeah. we love what you guys are doing too. Every day I see something like very positive and inspirational from you guys. And just, it's awesome. It's really right. nice actually talking to you and meeting you. <laughs> so Yeah. Right. I know we could have, like we would like hang out. We have very similar backstories. <laughs> right. Our kids are the same age. Yeah, so right. Hey, yeah. they'd probably be good friends. We should just, yeah. you know, if we ever move out by you guys, we'll hang out. Yeah. <laughs> or sure. if you're ever out this way. Right. Like exactly. Out, sure. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, we're going to link everything in the, in, in the, in the story and the bio and all that stuff. So, um, other than that, we'll just, uh, we'll end with a prayer in the name of the father, son, Holy spirit, glory be to the father and to the son and to the Holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. Father, son, Holy spirit. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. You have a beautiful night. Thanks. Thanks you, too. you too. Bye guys.